keep winning. <laughs> Over the past eight months, whilst traveling on the road, I thought I'd share with you the types of meals that we prepare whilst on the road. Pretty much, we eat exactly the same as we do at home. The only difference is, is in our van, I don't have the facility to store a lot of perishables. So we are having to go to the supermarket, usually every five or six days. There's been certain periods of time where we've really needed to plan ahead. Things like crossing the Nullarbor, where it takes several days to cross over and there's no grocery stores along the way. When you go off-grid camping for up to seven days, you need to think and prepare what you need ahead. And also those times when you're traveling interstate and you cross over quarantine um, borders that require you to have your van inspected to make sure that you're not taking a particular type of certain fruit and veg. Um, they do come into your van, they will search everywhere, your fridge, your cupboards, so make sure that you're doing the right thing. So there's no point doing a massive big grocery shop before you cross over borders without researching it first, otherwise it will be an expensive lesson to learn. Other periods of time where you really need to think about what items you're going to buy is when you're in remote areas. You don't always have access to a Coles, Woolies or Aldi, so you're going to need to use the smaller grocery stores. But for our, our travels, we've never really gone without. We've always been able to find something along the way. So what equipment do we have? We have an oven, yes, with a griller, and we use this quite a bit. On top, we've got a two burner cooktop. I have a thermopot, which you've seen in a couple of episodes that we've done. A thermopot is similar to a slow cooker, and that is with thermo cooking, you fry up and cook up what you need on the stove for about 20 minutes, put it all inside the thermopot, seal it up and then during transit for the next six to eight hours the heat that it creates it continues cooking so no power no gas and at the end of the day you've got a ready hot meal kids aren't big fans on it but we actually love it along with this we have our outdoor barbecue which we cook obviously steaks sausages all our barbecue needs we use it as an oven so we heat up pies quiches and shannon cooks a marvelous roast and you have seen those on our episodes as well. We've got our fry pans, saucepans. Jess has her Nutribullet, which she blends up her smoothies most mornings when we're connected to power. We've got a toaster, a sandwich maker. We've got two types of kettles, a gas kettle and an electric kettle for obvious reasons. One for when we're camping off grid, one when we're connected to power. We also use fire pits outside as well. We have our own fire pit or you can use one that's already been created outside. We've got a plate that we can put over the top and wrap your meal in foil, put it on the fire and it's good as rain. It's a really nice way of eating food as well. At breakfast times, we have a variety of things. Toast, cereals, bacon and eggs, pancakes, fruit, fruit bowls, plain fruit, and Shannon and I's go-to breakfast meal is our oats. We love our oats with our seeds, nuts, fruit, berries, you name it, he calls it breakfast of champions. It's our go-to most days of the week. For lunch, we use bread for sandwiches. We'll do noodles with frozen peas and corn and tomatoes. One of our staples is our wraps. Wrap bread lasts a hell of a lot longer than normal bread, so we tend to use that a lot more than just plain old sandwiches. So on our wraps, we either have chicken, ham, mainly ham, and a variety of salads, depending on what's in season and what we can get our hands on. If we're lucky enough to be connected up to power, we do like to toast these as well, and it gives a, a nice extra bit of flavor that we don't usually have. Other meals that we have that I didn't mention earlier are hamburgers and chips. The kids love their hamburgers and fries. We do as well. Tacos is a staple also. We did away with the taco shells early in our travels and we've decided to just use the corn chips. So much easier for traveling. Chicken stir fries with rice, absolutely love them. At the supermarket, I just buy the already diced stir fry strips or diced chicken breast. Already buy the pre-cut stir fry vegetables fresh from the veg section. So much easier. I don't have the bench space to prepare big meals like that while traveling. So that's a way that we can still eat exactly the same as we do at home while we're on the road. Other meals we do are salmon, barramundi, in the oven, in the barbecue, doesn't matter. It just depends on the weather. If it's too hot in the van to cook, then we don't turn the oven on. And if it's the weather's terrible outside like it is today, then we cook inside. That way it warms up and heats the van up so it does two things at one time, warms us up and cooks our meal. 
So as you can see, when we're traveling on the road, we do actually eat very similar to what we do at home. Yes, there's a couple of little tips and tricks, as I've mentioned, that makes life easier for us on the road. Uh, things like that I didn't mention before, Shannon likes his yogurt. So at home, we'll buy the kilo tubs of yogurt, but here we just don't have the room. So we buy the six pack yogurts, things like that. Just simple little um, tweaks and changes that you make to make it life easier on the road. You're always gonna get stuck with your happy hours eating too much at that time of day, drinking too much, but your three meals of the day can be exactly the same as at home. Easy peasy, gotta do it. So that's it for this week's segment on Meals on Wheels. Until next time, see you later.